Okay, the car I'm about to show you today is a strange piece of work. And if you've got one of these, you may consider it collectible, because even after years, this car still costs their price. I'm gonna tear apart this Lambo. What if it burns down? So, what you think about this interior? Clean! I like Mini Coopers, they're cool and quite stylish. Some guys said this is the car for girls, but I would drive it myself. And I'm about to tear it into pieces with this Mini Cooper. Drink and sniff benzene. They don't sell it here. You won't find these cars in Russia. I'm gonna buy it on credit. How did you call yourself in your video, Daddy? This Mini Cooper is very cool, but a little bit too small. And if I want, I can drive the same distance like twice. You just think about it. How can I stay polite and well-mannered man when I have to deal with this? So this is almost my regular everyday morning, and as usual I go out and meet my crew, and together we'll start planning and shooting our test drive. I guess you've already seen a test drive of a Land Cruiser and that car sucks, and I hope you've seen a test drive of a wonderful TRX, but today we are reviewing Chow. He's a small, but a very self-confident dog. He never forgives anything to anyone and walks with his nose up. And this morning I happen to be dealing with him for the whole day. And he's gonna be traveling with us. So let me show you what we've got here. That's his food. Don't whine. So this is his breakfast and his lunch. And this bowl was supposed to be for water, but I poured his dog food there and he started sliding it with his nose all around the room. That was a huge mistake. And also I've got his favorite toy, we should always keep it at hand. And also we've got a G-Wagon that's gonna be a dog limo for today. Ciao, look what we've got there for you. You know what that is, right? That's your favorite G-Wagon. I know you love it. And this is the car we're going to test today. And this guy's your security guard. Hey, how are you, pal? Don't be a pussy. I know you like this car, you've never vomited inside of it yet. Hey, look over there. You don't see them, but they're gonna love you. And of course, Chow's got his special pillow. And what he loves most of all is this door sound. So when you come home in the evening, you just insert it into a regular plug. And that's it, that's all you have to do. And then just put this thing away like this. And when you see a green light, you are free to close everything and leave it here to charge. You've got an indicator right there. It charges itself with a regular plug. When we took it, we thought we were going to need a charging station and that we were about to face lots of problems, as it always happens with electric cars, because that what happened to Taycan. And that what happened when we've been shooting a Tesla. So an electric car always means standing in line waiting for your turn or searching for some special place to charge it. This car is free from half of these disadvantages and I understand it charges much longer. And it's not like 3 hours, it's about 10 hours. But do I give a f if I'm home? I came home in the evening and left it charging for the whole night. So now I'm about to tell you about this car because it has lots of advantages. Let's unplug it and shoot a test drive. Let's go. Sitting inside here, I don't feel like driving a car. Don't know why, but it feels different. It feels like driving a scooter, an all-season scooter. But at the same time, it's very similar to a BMW. Most of the software and the menu and the safety systems and lots of other different things, actually. All of it reminds me of a BMW so much, but it has its own style. And right now, the car is showing me that with this battery fully charged, I can drive it for 75 miles. That's not much, I know, but anyway, as soon as I saw the these numbers, I started respecting this automobile much more than I respected Taycans and much more than I respected Teslas or any other electric automobiles and that is why I start respecting it simply because it's not trying to f*** over me, it's not trying to fool me. This car is being honest and it says, you're about to drive only 75 miles, you won't be driving it for 250 or 300, so what's the point to lie about it like some Taycans or Teslas usually do. They say it can do over 200 miles, but in fact it does only 100. And I like this automobile is not trying to be misleading with you. And that's why it's absolutely clear to me. Guys, turn on the lights. By the way, as soon as they turn the lights on, we've become such a nice couple. It's 
he's got this spark green button over here. If you press it, the car will show you a special menu with better economy settings and these green modes and this green plus is the most economical one. And as soon as I pressed it, the power range immediately changed to 90 miles. And I'm more than sure that I'm really able to drive this car for 90 miles in this particular mode. Damn, that's what I like it for. When the car says that it's able to be driven for 90 miles only, I'm not nourishing any illusions about more. And I'm not wondering whether this car is able to get to Volokolam's car or not. Should I try some long distance trip or not? No, this automobile was designed and built specially for calm and comfortable city driving. And I'm not asking for more. I like everything I touch here, it's so well made. I even like how this blinker is working. It's wonderful, I like how it's being reflected in that Range Rover that didn't burn down yet. This car, by the way, has a pretty good configuration. Unfortunately, there is no sunroof in here, but I like the style of the interior. This dashboard is pretty unusual, and it's always like this in Mini Coopers. They are always stylish. So who this car is made for? I would say it's for everyone. It doesn't claim to be anything it's not. I still don't know whether it's able to drive you for the whole day for your personal needs. For me, at least, that's the main question, and I'd like to answer it in this test drive. For example, if I drive it to the office and stay there for the whole day while the car is being charged, then yes, it will definitely survive for the whole day. But today we're going to drive it for the whole day. And while we're shooting this test drive, we still have to accomplish lots of quests. And we have to drive to different places. And that's why I want to understand for myself whether I can live with this car. That's how a man who searches for some electricity looks like. Okay, the charging has started. We also got this one for 380 volts, and it's like 4 times faster. And what if it burns down? Hey, wait a second, they told me we can use it. They told me there are 380 ZBPs and locals and we can use them. First, let's plug it in, just put it out. Yeah, yeah, pull it out of the car first. Yeah, just pull it out. Okay, plug it in. God damn it, man, I'm scared. What if I'm get zapped? Oh, nothing's gonna happen. So why are you backing up then? Oh, it's working. The car's getting charged. Guys, why you look so confused? If it burns, you're my accomplices. Relax, I do that every time. I just... What do you mean? You do it every time. Well, it's the only way you can charge it. That's the new generation. So it's not my first time. Really? You may trust me. So you do that every time. And I was just about to tell people that this automobile is almost a concept car. And that very few people own it. And it's not certificated. And registered in Germany at Bavarian Motor Factory. And here you come with Russian license plates on this car. And it's already certificated. Wait a second, I need to put on my head. Now I'm cool. Okay, let's go compare them. Well, this one is before the facelifting. So if we talk in general, we can say that they've put this body over a BMW i3. Am I right? Well, yes, I guess so. They just took a Mini Cooper body and squeezed BMW guts into it. Man, you have to tell me if this particular car is really the only one. Yes, it is. So it's unique. Even though it's the same principle. Anyway, the question that really concerns me is the battery question. Because during the day, I drive like a lot. Is it enough for a day? Well, when I've got this car for a day, it turns to be pretty enough. And when in the evening I drove it to the charger, I mean the fast charger, and it charged 40% in 15 minutes. So basically this car is a cheap BMW. Yeah, but it's got the quality. Definitely, without a doubt. Already screwed someone inside of it. No, I would not take a risk banging in such a small car. It should be at least a countryman. Or a Jew wagon. I have never used it for this dirty work. There's plenty of room for a threesome. Oh, I have no doubts about that. So what you think? Would you like to own such a car? Yes, I guess so. Not as the only car, of course, but I would. Tell me, as a representative of contemporary youth, is it important? today to have a car if you want to get laid when you're 19 or 20 years old. What I mean is that when I was at your age, a guy needed to have a car to get laid. And if it was at least an old and rusty BMW 5 or 7, all girls are yours. And what about today? Well, today it's more complicated. And today they just take it for granted and you can't surprise anyone with just a car. So if you want to get laid in a city like Moscow, you should drive a Mercedes S-Class. Are you serious? Well, yeah, but still. We have to understand that all girls are different. So, yes, of course. I'm talking only about girls who are easy to... I got it. Then yes. By the way, it's a good car for a girl. That is true, I totally agree. But at the same time, I find it offensive when someone says that this car fits for girls only. I would gladly drive it myself. And by the way, while we're just standing here, can anyone check the battery, please? 99%. That's fast. I've got one morning question. How can one stay a well-behaved, civilized and cultural good boy who never swears bad words? How can I stay 
delicate because kids sometimes watch it. How can I stay polite and well-mannered man when I have to deal with this? Well, there are just very special people, and they are not like me, and they are not like you, they are completely different. I'm a don't give a f smart ass, and if you need a proof, there it is, only a guy like me may buy a car for more than half a million bucks, wrap it with a golden tape, and say that's my Rolls Royce Lightning, and that's okay for me, that's my everyday life, but is it okay for you? Or take a look at this, that's my Golden X5, and yes, I also painted golden, and it's got around a thousand horsepower, and I'm telling you cause I don't want you guys to expect me to be objective, hardly you can call me a sane person, you see what's going on, by the way, there's my Golden M5 over there, so I start the engine, yeah, go ahead. It's running. Should I rev it? Yeah, sure. Hit the red line. Is that enough? Yeah, cut. We've got a high recuperation mode and a low recuperation mode. Wait a second, what this recuperation is, someone may ask me. Recuperation is recharging your battery with the help of engine braking. When the car is rolling by inertia, the battery is gaining energy. The motors give the energy back. It's not much, but it can help you out for some short distance. But if you use this feature smart, like my friend Warpath, you can really get lots of profit. This is what he does. When his battery is fully dead, he simply stops some truck and asks the guy to tell him. He straps his Tesla to that truck, turns the recuperation mode on, and while his car is being towed by the truck, his battery is getting charged. And it can even get fully charged like in two hours, or even faster if you drive faster. And he does it like in the middle of nowhere. So when it's a high recuperation mode, the car brakes with its engine really hard. And in a low recuperation mode, the car brakes much softer. Right now I'm driving it in a high recuperation mode, and when I release the gas pedal, the car gets more energy. Let's try the low recuperation mode, and check how it brakes when I release the gas pedal. Well, seems like it doesn't brake at all. I don't feel like it's braking, it's just rolling like a usual car. So I have to brake with a pedal, so the brake pads will get worn much faster. For me, the high recuperation mode is much more comfortable. You just have to get used to it. What I'm trying to say is that if you practice enough, you can learn to drive in such a manner that you will never use your brake pedal even in the city. Well, maybe in case of some extraordinary situation, you will have to use your brake pedal, but in general, you will forget about it. Anyway, the car says we can drive it for 89 miles in such mode. I mean, 89 miles more, because we've been driving it for all this time while I'm talking, because we are shooting a test drive, and we have three men inside, and two of them are quite stocky, big and heavy, as you may see. And also, we have a dog, and it's already getting chilly inside here, because we are trying the most economic mode and nothing's working here. Neither the heater nor the conditioner. The car tries to save the energy. So I think I should rather return the balance mode. It's called mid. And by the way, it also has got a sport mode. It may sound ridiculous, but anyway, we have it. And when I turn it on, you may see this little cart icon on the display. By the way, we've got 74 miles left. If we talk about its suspension, well, it works. But don't expect for some comfort from it because it's not what it's made for. But anyway, it feels balanced. The car feels very solid. Nothing feels loose. And I enjoy how this car steers. I can say that everything in this car is so average in good way. The appearance is average but stylish. The interior. It's got nothing extraordinary, but still it's so stylish and made with taste. And that's what Mini Cooper is all about. And that's what I respect these cars for. I don't know why didn't I buy one of these yet. Perhaps one of my previous test drives influenced it. Long ago I filmed a test drive of that car. What's up fellas, my name is Davidich and today we're going to test this Mini Cooper. And after that, well, somehow it didn't work out. And apart from that, the car costed around 50,000 bucks and I found it overpriced. But nevertheless, they always have been valued, like all of these crazy fast cars. And if you've got one of these, you may consider it collectible, because even after years, this car still costs their price. And no matter how many years has passed, no matter the time, this car still cost.
check it out, they don't sell it in Russia, did you know that? They used to sell these cars long ago, then they stopped bringing them here, and now there are only 5 cars in the whole country. I remember the times BMW were selling i3s and i8s, and I was in love with them. Damn, I was so much into these cars, cause first of all, that's a BMW, and of course I still like the style and the design of these cars. And of course I like these cars being electric. This is a nice city automobile. Why are you smiling? What the f*** are you smiling? I just noticed the taillights were off, but they went on when you closed it. Yes, that's right. That's made for the safety. Do you know why these lower taillights are on? Why? The lower ones come off when I close it. But when I leave this door up, the cars coming behind me won't see the main taillights. That's why I've got these extra taillights and everyone can see me at night if I stopped on a highway. But when it's down... I no longer need these ones, so they go off, and these go on, that's made for my safety, that's why I stopped laughing and listen attentively. When I first saw these cars in Munich right at the BMW plant, I was so amazed when I first got into it, and the first reason why I'm just gonna show it to you, remember getting out of the Mini Cooper? Yeah, sure. That was kinda funny. It was. I mean, you feel yourself stuck in a doorway, and while your ass is still in there, your face is almost on the ground. Get into it. Well, yeah, it's much better. I got your point. So what? Do you agree it's gorgeous? Oh yeah. Damn, I love this car, I'm gonna bite on credit. I'm gonna be kicked out of my house. It's all like fully carbon, and it's made like this not just for appearance, it's not just for the aesthetic. This is all practical. The price is way too high, I agree. It's 7.3 to 60, and it's got 125,000 miles of warranty. Let's check it out. Oh, wait a second. It's two years with no mileage limit and 3 years or 125,000 miles after warranty service. Well, it's just a little bit weaker than our Mini Cooper. That costs around 45,000 and you won't buy it anywhere. And I actually find it quite stylish, but this car is gorgeous. How cool are these materials? Just touch it. I mean, these parts are made of different materials. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the 6. And they are so nice to touch. I like this handle. Check out the shifter. Look. Yeah, I see it. It's the style. Okay, just get into this car, get in here. And this is why, guys, I like BMWs, just look over here. I was so amazed with it in Munich. Just look at this panel, look at these incredible materials. And this display is awesome. This graphics and the menu is wonderful. Same as hold this new multimedia system. The style is f***ing amazing. Look at the glove compartment, it's cool. It is. Damn, it's cool. And check this out. This is insane. This is so cool. Can I open this part separately? I'm already in love with it, and the most convenient thing here is closing the rear doors. Actually it is, I didn't even think about it. Love it. This car's got so much cool features, just look at this key. Even this key is cool. Oh, this is a nice place for my dog. Bring me the dog. And there's only five of them in Russia. Okay, Chow, if we ever drive this car together, this is gonna be your place. Just don't scratch anything, I don't wanna buy it. Okay, I wanna buy it, but it's too expensive. So what, do you like it? You can actually eat from here. Okay, now let's compare these two cars. Here, this car costs 65,000, and that's the best configuration you can get. Made in 2021, and now it's back in Russia. And today, this car is fully tested with no errors, with no mistakes. It's reliable, come and get it. And the Mini Cooper, the one that stands right over there. Well, the previous one, before the facelifting, cost 45,000. And it means that the newer car, the one that stands over there, is gonna cost more than 50,000. I guess it's gonna cost around 55,000 or something. And if we actually compare it to that BMW, I would definitely add some more money and buy that BMW. I simply like it more, even though this Mini Cooper is cool and I have no claims on it. And I like how it looks like, but the BMW looks much more aggressive to me. Just look at its design, look at its headlights, and also check out this rear window. Look, that's actually all glass. Pay your attention to it, that's two different pieces of glass. It's so perfectly made. And this door is huge. Even though this car looks so small, the door is huge. And the height is perfect, you don't have to lean when you get inside here. My height is 1.75 meters, and here I put my leg here, and easily get inside here. I'm literally falling inside. In case if you don't have enough room for your arm, you can open this up. Awesome. And what do we have under the hood? Okay, we've got here some small frunk. You can carry a money case here. I need to get inside here. That's how you can access all the necessary liquids. That's actually very smart. I agree. It just sticks here. I really want to drive this car. Damn, I like the style of this car. I like this black hood and the bumper. There's not a single unnecessary detail. And this windshield is big enough, right, as it should be. And also, I like being seated high enough. I can see everything and the rear seat. 
is quite roomy. Does it feel bigger than in Mini Cooper? Yeah, sure. Because you've tried both. Yeah, it feels bigger. Well, okay, Mini Cooper is also fine. Yeah, if you need to place some young girls in it, you can place like five of them back there and go for a long distance trip with no discomfort. Yeah, but we are not that small. That's right, we are not. That's why we don't own such cars. You've already pressed the start button. What you waiting for? I wait for... Oh, how silly I am. I can sound it if you need to. This is an electric car. <laughs> she pressed the start button like three times already. Well, when I release the gas pedal and the car brakes itself, it feels exactly as driving an electric scooter. That's right. When you release that thing, it's just... Yeah, it's recuperating. A second ago, the girl almost cut us off. I wish there were such a law that forbids you driving if you are a moron. When we pass the speed bumps, I hit the roof with my head every single time. Despite that, everything's fine. Well, it's not the car's fault. The problem is your height, but it's not my desire to jump on bumps. The camera guys in the G-Wagon try to keep up with us. What a badass is driving this Mini Cooper. Not my fault, there are some bandits in a G-Wagon chasing me. I run for my life. Man, this car is lean but mean. Okay, let's f*** around a little bit. You just look at that beard inside that Lamborghini. And I'm about to tear it into pieces with this Mini Cooper. My new little friend is about to destroy it. My watch says it's 62 seconds before the death of this Lamborghini Urus. Okay, those who get first to that corner and turns left will be proclaimed as a winner. That said, too easy, he's lagging behind, shoot him. That was a flawless victory. And don't, don't just, don't tell me these stories. That that guy was not even intended to compete with me. And that he was not ready for this race. Or his lunch didn't work. Or he didn't even notice I was there. No, 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 I'm not listening to you. Tell it someone else. Oh, Jesus. Did they put my dog behind the steering wheel? Yeah, probably. The guy got scared himself. He didn't feel we were there. Well, I don't feel this car either. Look how fast I can run over this zebra crossing. Split second. Wow, man, that's incredible. The blink of an eye. Hey, guys, listen up. I've invented a new formula. Mean people drive minis. Poor people drive Porsches. Luxurious people drive Lexuses. And morons drive Toyotas. What about Mercedes-Benz? Merciful mercenaries from the city of Mercia. And every day they drink and sniff benzene. And what about BMW? Well, boomers like me. Only boomers like me drive BMWs. I've got an important question. Did my dog make shit? Oh no, he just walked. Oh, what a bastard. Give him to Sergey. He's so scary. Chow will shed himself just looking at him. The jewels in the chain. Deep dishes on the range. Mixed breed dame with that sick. Hey, what's up? How did you call yourself in your video? Daddy? Yeah, daddy. A father. Okay, then listen to your godfather. I feel like I'm really into this girl. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I will explain you why. Because neither the Tesla nor the Porsche and the Jaguar was honest with me. And they've been lying about the better range of their cars calling numbers like yeah. 300 miles and else. But when it came to business, the range turned to be ridiculous. The reason I call for you in your Tesla is this. Yeah, it's charging! Unbelievable! So what you think about such an experience with this car? And what you think is gonna end? Very badly, I think. Because first of all, so you don't recommend I us. don't recommend you doing it. Simply because this automobile may not come for such an ability of recuperation. And it can kill the battery or the engine. Sorry, but I'm gonna say it. It's such a typical Mini Cooper. But isn't it cool? It is. Very cool. Do you like its style? I like it. I love it. And the thing I like most of all is that they usually put all displays in most of electric cars. But not here. These are better than in my X5. Well, it costs a bloody fortune. Yeah, it's expensive. Okay, let's try to be objective. How cheap you can buy a Tesla Model 3? Well, actually, you can buy it for the same price. Yeah. And you can drive it for 185 miles minimum. But still, all electric cars provided for Russian market, all of them are actually way too expensive. And the only single brand that is competitive is the Kia. Kia sell their cars for very low prices. 
<laughs> no, seriously. You can consider me the ambassador of Kia, at least some people think so. <laughs> By the way, jokes aside, I've been watching Kia for a very long time, so it won't surprise me at all if they beat everyone. Well, they already do. We have already got the EV6, but they're gonna provide new models from 1 till 9 for a different price range. Well, right now I'm interested in one particular car. And if it persuades me to buy it, we will continue this conversation about electric cars as equal. Is it an i3? No. An i8? No. Wait a second, are we talking about some new BMW? It's a Lucid. Well, Lucid is my number two. And I'm watching this brand for three years already. Recently, I've seen some latest pictures of this car, and it's very beautiful. I totally agree with you. Both the interior and the exterior is very beautiful. But you have to keep in mind that Elon Musk, he always keeps some aces hidden in his sleeves. When the Lucid finally fully comes to the market, I mean, not like one car in a year, but when everyone can buy it, I'm sure that Elon Musk will have a response. I remember when Lucid showed their official prices, Elon Musk immediately reduced the minimal price for Teslas for like thousand bucks. Seriously? Yeah, because Lucid claimed to be the cheapest electric car on the market, and the same day Tesla reduces the price to be cheaper. Just to show everyone that they remain the cheapest. By the way, talking about this battery, it's already 4.30 pm, and we've already been to BMWs, we've seen the i3, then we went to the restaurant to have a meal, and still we haven't charged it yet. Now I'm afraid we'll have to drive it till midnight to completely disarm this battery. So, even though right now we have to drive this car to another part of the city. I'm sure we won't kill this battery today. It's more than enough. This battery is more than enough to drive this car in the city for the whole day. And I have to admit that I like this Mini Cooper, it's so stylish. But still, when I see a BMW i3 and when I start comparing them, I realize that it was made in 2012 or 2013 or something. And I still like that design, that car still looks so awesome. Anyways, I don't see any point of racing this Mini Cooper and challenge anyone, because this is not a sports car. And let's be honest, this car was not made for racing. And I feel it myself, I feel the response of the gas pedal. So... This is the moment I know I will not win. When you are small and thin, you should watch your tongue, because you are not a fighter. And same thing I can say about this car. But of course, when I see a Mini GP, and I really like that car, it's really cool, but I don't understand what kind of a state I should be in to buy it. I mean, it's not a bad car, not at all. But that should be my fifth or seventh car, I suppose. Neither can I imagine the reason to buy it, nor can I imagine the mood to drive this car. And one more reason why I like i3 more than this car is its carbon body. And this car is just a regular Mini Cooper. And what they did is just put it over an i3. Check this out, I found a warranty. Three years extra services. Three years or 200,000 kilometers. Battery warranty. Eight years or 100,060 kilometers. But what I liked most about this car were the plugs. There in the trunk, you can find different plugs for every possible occasion. It seems that it's got every single plug in the world. Whatever you may need, this car definitely has got it. Is this car a first such a buy of yours? No, first I've bought a GP1, but I ran out of it. What you mean? Well, I mean it got tired. By the way, there were like 2000 of those cars in the world. And that car used to have its own serial number. It was 1703. So after I ran out of it, I decided to buy another one, but a fresher one. So I bought myself the same car, another GP1. It was a 2006 limited edition. And I also ran out of it. But I really like those cars. And I was really looking forward to this car, but I found myself kind of tired from Mini Coopers. And that's why I bought myself a Porsche. A Porsche 911. And first I thought that was it. And these cars became unavailable here, because there were like 3000 of them in the world. So I thought I was into Porsche. But as soon as I've got the opportunity of buying this car, I couldn't help myself. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it brings much more emotions, at least to me. I know they're uncomparable. But this car is a Canon. And it's got a 2-liter engine and 306 horsepower front-wheel drive with a differential lock. Well, I never prepare for my test drives beforehand, and I try to understand the car in the process, whether I like it or not. And I test the cars that interest me with their price and their power. And this is the only way we do our test drives, and all advantages and disadvantages I find in the process. Yeah, awesome. So... 
Unfortunately, I have no opportunity to test this car for several days, because first of all, I don't have so much time. That's the first reason, and the second reason is no one should give me such a car for more than 15 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes maybe, but not more than 15, because it's fast and it's capable of doing things. Yeah, it is. And the main thing, I'm capable of doing things either. That's why I want you to tell about it. Um... Tell us what you feel about it and tell us about the advantages and disadvantages of this automobile. Because this car is definitely unique. And I guess you must be really into it to buy it for such a price. It should be a guy like you, a real car gourmet, one in a thousand or ten thousand, who would say I want this particular cherry from the cake top. And I like this car, but what I'm trying to say is that buying such an automobile is a statement. And you must know for sure where exactly you should drive this car to. I mean, if you ask me where I can drive it, I would say I have no idea. I would just do insane things in the traffic and drive it like this. Even when I'm driving a Porsche 911, I enjoy it and drive it calmly in the traffic. There's no problem with that. But when I get into this automobile, I forget everything. And all you think about is, well, here we go again. This car provokes you like all the time and it's literally impossible to drive it calmly. And also this car is very stiff, I would say it's incredibly stiff. And it's very bouncing. And its fuel tank is its disadvantage because it's too small. It's only 40 liters. Also I don't like the music system, it's just two speakers. And also it's got no windshield heater, even though all the F Mini Coopers got this feature. Unfortunately this car lacks it. On the whole, if you want to buy it, you have to mind that this car is very uncomfortable. And also this car always catches the ruts like all the time. When it gets into the ruts, you have to grab the steering wheel with two hands, because otherwise the car will knock it out of your hand and you will lose control. And also I didn't like the stock tires, and they're made by Hankook. What I mean is that they're not bad, but after 4 or even 3000 miles they're completely dead. But despite that they got the grip, and they're good at braking, and they're good at cornering, but they're too soft. And also, if it's raining, you have to grab the steering wheel very tight, especially when it's raining and you catch the ruts. You have to grab it tight. So Vladimir is an embodiment of masculinity, what you think about this automobile? Well, what you expect to hear from me? First of all, of course, I consider this car way too small. And I don't like the British flag on the taillights. Well, this car is small, but it can rock and roll, just look what it does. Well, if you ask me, I would say that Vadim should drive this car together with his husband. Shut your fucking mouth, you dumbass, or I'll make you my wife. <laughs> and his husband. <laughs> so what can I say, this Mini Cooper is very cool, but a little bit too small. At least for me. That's why I'm sure I would never drive this car. Even more than that, I would never sit behind the steering wheel of such an automobile. Simply because I consider it an automobile for girls. It fits only for girls and women. And no guy who consider himself a man should drive such an automobile. Agree or not, but that's my opinion, so there's no way I would drive such a car. Guys, I have to leave for an expected business meeting like right now. So the shooting is over for today. But I'm completely out of time, so I need one of you to take this car back to the garage. Why the f*** did I have to say it? Jesus Christ, I hope I'm not gonna meet people I know on the way. I was driving a G-Wagon a second ago. I was swearing this car, but now I have to drive a God damn it. Well, man, you never know what expects for you, so I think that's destiny. Well, it's not that bad as I have thought. It fits any hole on the road. That's the first time I'm driving such a car. For two men, there's a catastrophic lack of space. Of course, have you seen yourself? You're fucking hyenas. Okay, I kinda changed my mind about it. So now you change your boots. Yeah, I changed my boots like in no time. But in general, as I have said before, this car is made specially for you. you you should drive it with your husband like everywhere and don't be ashamed of it. I'm gonna feed you your fucking hat. And talking about the space, it actually looks so small from the outside, but inside it's bigger than I have thought. Yeah, said the guy sitting on the front seat. You should try the rear one. And what's wrong with the rear seats? I have to put my legs inside of his ass, that's what's wrong with that. Well, actually, it's not bad at all. Damn, this car is fucking awesome. Hey, Vadim. What you think of it? Yeah, it's cool. I didn't expect this car to be so fast. Jesus. Wait a second, let me floor it. It accelerates pretty fast. So, I've been driving this car for the whole day and now it's almost over. I've accomplished lots of my personal quests, such as buying a sports suit. And that was not an easy task, because I became much thinner and I have to buy lots of new clothes. We've been to a BMW showroom, checked out the i3. I mean, we've been to lots of places. And they were like all over the city. And I didn't race it anywhere. 
Today, the Satomobile didn't have such a task, as well as I didn't try to save every single energy pros and I've been using the air conditioner and everything I wanted. I've been using this car as I usually do. I start it, I drive it and don't think about the fuel, and it turns out that I used only 30% of its charge. That's 100%, 50, 60 and 70. How fast can I recharge it with a regular plug, you may ask me? Two or three hours, I guess. So, anyway, it's gonna be fully charged by the morning. What I'm trying to say is that I can drive this car twice as long as I've been driving it today with one charge. And by the way, the temperature today is plus 4 degrees Celsius, which is far from minus 10, or a typical Russian minus 20, but at the same time it's same far from plus 25 that we usually have in summer. So the heater is on, and we also used the seat heater today, and right now the car is showing us that we can drive it for 58 miles. Since morning I've been driving this car for about 20 miles before the first charge, and after that I drove it for 10 more miles. If this car is gonna cost less than 40,000 bucks it's very cool, and I'm not driving it like a pensioner, I'm stepping on a gas pedal when I need to. I wonder what would happen if it were about minus 30. Uh. And I was only with 15% of charge left. Though I really doubt we can get in such a situation with this particular automobile. I wish I could drive it longer and drive it in winter. But anyway, I consider it a good buy. Taking into account that they sell a Toyota Camry for 46,000 with its ancient transmission and interior. And again, I'm doing it. I have no idea why I'm mocking Toyota every time. This car is wonderful and it's not necessary to drive it at 100 miles per hour all the time. It's got nice steering and with a good driver behind the steering wheel, you'll get everything you want. Those guys in a Jeep and couldn't keep up with us. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. All car brands strive to break into the market and occupy this niche of electric automobiles as soon as possible. All of them want to snatch their own piss. Some of them says their cars got a thousand horsepower and they provide the fastest car on the market. Or some of them make electric hummers. And if you try hard, you can find lots of different ideas. And while this industry is still in development, it's gonna be trial and error. These guys have chosen the easy path. They took a reliable time-tested car. They are familiar with it. And what they did, at least how I see it, they just put the inside of a BMW i3 inside of this automobile, and that's what they got. And the BMW i3 is more synthetic, and its style is completely different, and it's made out of carbon fiber, while this car is basically aluminum, iron and glass, and without a doubt I liked it. But still, I don't think I'm gonna buy one of these, and not because it's bad or something, but because I've got no room for it. This is the car you should drive every day. This is the kind of a car that should become your body. And now I guess I was wrong when I said that this car should become your fifth or seventh car. It should become your first car. This is the car that should become your working horse. And you should drive it every single day. Once upon a time, lots of car brands, including BMW, didn't want to make turbo engines. But when the time came, they did. Once upon a time, they didn't want to make front wheel drive. But they did when the time came. Not long ago, they didn't want to make electric cars, but today everyone's making it. They need some time to get used to it. It's the matter of time, we just have to wait. This car was awesome, and I liked it. And I send my regards and respect to everyone who drives Mini Coopers all over the world. Thanks for watching, my name is Eric Davidich, and this was a kind of a light D3 test. See ya!